Hello guys, in today's lesson we are doing trigonometric functions and we are basically revising what we've learned in grade 11 and the only difference is we are now going to work with a double angle. So in the diagram below we have two functions. We have fx is equals to tan x minus 1 and gx is equals to cos 2x. There's a restriction on x, that's the angle size, and x is restricted between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. If we look at the diagram, how it looks like, this restriction is shown, so you see it's between 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees and 180 degrees. The sketch doesn't go on after that, based on that restriction. Then we have two graphs, the one is marked with an F, the other one is marked with a G. So F is tan X minus 1 and G is cos of 2X. The questions that we are going to deal with now is going to determine different properties that we read from the diagram. And the answers would be in terms of X. So the question would be, for which values of x is the following? So the first one, for which values of x is tan x equals to cos 2x plus 1? But in the diagram, we don't have tan x alone. If I move the plus 1 over, I transpose it, I have tan x minus 1 equals to cos 2x. That is, fx equal to gx. Now look on the graph where the two of them are equal. And they are equal where they intersect. And they intersect only at one place where x is equal to 45 degrees. The second question is, where is, for which values of x is 2 cos square x minus 1 equal to 0? But the information given earlier there wasn't any 2 cos square x minus 1 on the graph. What you need to do now is identify that this is the double angle for cos. So that therefore 2 cos square x minus 1 is cos 2x. And where is cos 2x equal to 0? Looking at the graph, cos 2x is this gx. And it's equal to 0 at 135 degrees, 45 degrees, and negative 45 degrees. And the way we write it is x is equal to negative 45 degrees, um, 45 degrees, and 135 degrees. We do not have to simplify this or do any calculations. We simply read it from the graph. The third question is, for which values of x is fx smaller than 0? If we look at the graph, this is fx. It represents tan x minus 1. And where it's smaller than 0, if this is the x-axis, the values below the x-axis are smaller than 0 or negative. And the graph is smaller than 0 for values of x between 45 degrees up until negative 90 degrees. But notice, this tan graph cannot touch the negative 90 degrees because it's an asymptote. But it is exactly on the 45 degrees. So the way we write it is fx is smaller or equal to 0 where x is smaller or equal to 45 degrees because it's standing on the x-axis and up until the value of negative 90 degrees. But notice it's not equal to negative 90 degrees because negative 90 degrees is an asymptote. There's a second part where the graph is also uh, smaller or equal to zero. 
and that is from, from 90 degrees up until 180 degrees. So the second solution speaks about 90 degrees up until 180 degrees. So X can stand on 180 degrees because there's a valid solution, but X cannot be equal to 90 degrees, so it will not be included. The fourth question is, for which values of X is FX bigger or equal to GX? Let's look at the graph. Where is FX bigger or equal to GX? And we can see that this graph F is above the graph of G only in this section. The other sections, F is below GX, so meaning it is smaller than GX. So it is only bigger than G between 45 degrees up until 90 degrees. But notice at 45 degrees, it is also equal to each other. But at 90 degrees, we have an asymptote. And the way we write it, x is between 45 degrees included because the graphs are equal at 45 degrees and smaller than 90 degrees. It cannot be equal because tan does not exist at 90 degrees. The fifth question is, for which values of x is fx smaller than gx? So fx is smaller than gx between 45 degrees and negative 90 degrees and between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. But notice it's not asking for where is it equal, simply smaller. And the way we write that solution is fx is smaller than gx for values of x between negative 90 degrees till 45 degrees and between 90 degrees up until 180 degrees. The reason why we write the equal sign there is because both graphs exist there and it can stand on that point and that, that information is still valid. At 180 degrees exactly fx is still smaller than gx. The next question is, for which values of x is fx bigger or equal to negative 1? So here we have negative 1. And if I follow this negative 1, I see that fx is touching negative 1 at 0 degrees, and then it's bigger than negative 1. And if I follow it through, it's also standing on negative 1 at x is equal to 180 degrees. So the way we write it, fx is bigger and equal to negative 1 from 0 degrees up until 90 degrees. I cannot include the 90 because x cannot exist there. And also, x is standing on negative 1 at 180 degrees. The last question for this lesson is, for which values of x is fx times gx bigger or equal to 0? So the way we answer that question is by seeing the graph in different sections. Let's start from left to right. If I ignore the rest of the graph, I can see that gx is smaller than 0 here, and fx is smaller than 0. So a negative times a negative will create a positive value. So fx times gx in this section would be bigger or equal to 0. Then in the next section, I have fx smaller than 0 and gx bigger than 0 because it's above the x-axis. So a positive multiplied with a negative is negative. Now 
the next section we have is the same. We have a negative because fx is smaller than 0 and gx is bigger than 0, meaning above the x-axis. So a positive times a negative is negative. In this section we have fx is a positive value, gx is a negative value. So again, a positive times a negative gives us a negative. In the second last section, we have gx is smaller than 0 because it's below the x-axis and fx is smaller than 0. So a negative times a negative will create a positive value. And lastly, we have gx as a positive value because it's above the x-axis and fx as a negative value. So positive times a negative will give us a negative answer. So the graph of fx multiplied with gx will yield a value bigger or equal to zero in these sections where we have positive values when we multiply. And the way we write it x must be between negative 90 degrees but small and equal to negative 45 degrees. x must be between 90 degrees or bigger than 90 degrees and smaller and equal to 155 degrees. And also this is true where fx times gx is equal to 0, which is happening at 45 degrees. So fx times gx at that point of intersection is also equal to 0.